In the previous video, I went over body fluid. In this video, I'm going to cover types of fluid in the inpatient setting. This video has two objectives. The first one is to be able to recognize the types of fluid and the purpose. And the second objective is to be able to calculate maintenance fluid for a patient. So let's jump into the types of fluid. There are two major types of fluid. The first one is called crystalloid. The second one is called colloids. Crystalloid, they cost less and they, are they have a fewer adverse reaction versus colloid. They are intravenous fluid that contain water, sodium, and chloride. So depending on the solution, they may also contain lactate, potassium, calcium, acetate, and magnesium. Crystalloid, they're divided into two parts. The first part, they are used for volume resuscitation. And the second one, they are not used for volume resuscitation. So for those that are used for volume resuscitation, they are divided into two categories. The first one is the unbalanced solution, which is normal saline. The second one is the balanced solution, which is lactated ringers. Lactated ringers, they are preferred in some disease states, such as sepsis. They are much closer to the plasma electrolyte composition, which I will explain what that means in a moment. Sodium and chloride, they do not freely cross into the cell and distribute evenly in the extracellular fluid. So what that means is that first, lactate ringers or normal saline, they do not cross into the intracellular fluid. And for the extracellular fluid, two parts, they're not distributed evenly. So for 0.9% sodium chloride or normal saline and lactate ringer solutions, 25% will remain in the intravascular space and 75% will remain in the interstitial space. So let's take an example. If a patient is given normal saline 1000 milliliter, 250 milliliter of that will remain in the blood, which is the intravascular space, and 75% of that would be 750 milliliter will remain in the interstitial space. Normal sodium serum in the body is between 135 to 145 milliequivalent per liter. And normal chloride serum in the body is between 98 to 109 milliequivalent per liter. So let's say a patient has a value that is less than 135 for sodium. That means it's a hyponatremia condition. And if it's a higher than 145, it's called hypernatremia, which is high level of sodium in the body. And it's the same thing for chloride. So if a patient has less than 98, it's going to be called hypochloremia. And if it's higher than 109, it's going to be called hyperchloremia. So now going back to what I said, that lactate ringers, they are much closer to the plasma electrolyte composition. So what I meant is that normal saline, the content has sodium and chloride, where lactate ringers, in addition to sodium and chloride, they contain lactate, potassium, and calcium, which is closer, closer to the plasma electrolyte composition in the body. So when would you pick normal saline versus lactate ringers? So this would be depending on the patient's lab. So let's say a patient comes in and they need volume resuscitation, and we know that normal saline and lactate ringers, they're both good option for that purpose. However, patient also has hypokalemia, which is low level of potassium in the body. So the normal level of potassium in the body is between 3.5 to 5 milliequivalent per liter. And in our case, it's right now for the patient, he has less than 3.5 milliequivalent per liter. So going back to our option, the patient need volume of resuscitation and they need potassium at the same time. So looking at the options, the best option would be here lactate ringers because it contain formal equivalent per liter of potassium in it versus sodium chloride or normal saline. It does not contain that. So the best option here would be lactate ringers. Let's take another example. So let's say a patient comes in and they are at the borderline for chloride. Let's say they're right at 108, 109 milliequivalent per liter. So to prevent hyperchloremia, which is high level of chloride, we know that both of these options, normal saline and lactate ringers, they contain chloride. But normal saline contain 154 milliequivalent per liter of chloride, where lactate ringers contain 109 milliequivalent per liter of chloride. So we know that 
lactate ringers contain less of a content of chloride. So in between the two, the patient would be at higher risk of developing hyperchloremia with normal saline because it has higher content of chloride, where with lactate ringers would be a safer option for that patient. So again, lactate ringer in this case would be a better option. So now moving from the first part to the second part. The second part, which is not used for volume resuscitation, and that is dextrose in water. So dextrose in water, they're metabolized into water and carbon dioxide. Water can cross any membrane. So D5W distribute evenly in the body compartment, and that's what makes them different than the first part. And one needs to be cautious when using dextrose in water because in patients with neurological injury and elevated intracranial pressure, D5W can cross into the cerebral cells causing an increase in the intracranial pressure, which can lead to more issues. So always one needs to be careful. D5W, which is 5% of dextrose, and that is 5 grams of dextrose per every 100 milliliter of water. So what is the role of therapy for the two types of crystalloid? So basically they are used for, for fluid replacement in several disease states such as shock, hemorrhage, burn, and maintenance of fluid. So normal saline and D5W, they are primarily used as a diluent for medication. So if a physician would order some medication for a patient, for some types of medication, they come in an IV form in a vial. And for these vials, they do need to be mixed in this diluent to be given for that patient as an IV line. So that's the main purpose for these. And they come in a different volume. They come in 50 milliliter, 100 milliliter, 250, 500 milliliter, and 1000 milliliter. So, and they're divided into three types. The first type is the isotonic, which means the ratio of sodium to the liquid is normal. And that is for several options. So we have 0.9% normal saline, lactate ringers, and D5W. The second type is the hypotonic, which means the ratio of sodium to the water or the fluid is less than the normal. And we have a couple of options. 0.45% normal saline, which is half of the normal and 0.2% normal saline, which is quarter of the normal. And these options, the hypotonic, they're basically used in patients that are come with hypernatremia, so high level of sodium. So in this case, we wanna use as much less of a sodium as possible. That's why we use hypotonic solution because they contain less of a sodium per fluid ratio in comparison to the, to the normal ones. And also under hypotonic, we have sterile water for injection. And this is never given alone for injection. The main purpose is to dissolve medication initially that are later added to the IV bag. The third type is the hypertonic. Hypertonic, they're mainly used in patients that are having hyponatremia conditions. So these patients, they have low level of sodium, so we need to give them higher ratio of sodium in comparison to the fluid. And we have different options. We have 2% normal saline, 3%, 7.5%, 23.4%. We also have a combination between normal saline and dextrose. So we have D5W NS, D5W.45 NS, D5W.2 NS, or dextrose 10% in water. And they are also used to decrease intracranial pressure. So now that I have covered the first type of fluid, let's jump into the second major type, and that is called colloids. Colloids, they are large insoluble molecules, usually protein or sugars. They are dispersed in solution that remain in the intravascular space. So basically they remain in the blood, they remain in the intravascular space, and the main reason is to increase the oncotic pressure. Therefore, they provide a greater intravascular volume expansion than crystalloid. And they are more expensive than crystalloid. This is one of the other reasons why they are not used more often in comparison to crystalloid in practice. And albumin is the most commonly used. And there are two types. We have 5% albumin and 25% albumin. The 5% is 5 grams per 100 milliliter of solution. 
and they are more common in practice than 25%. And the role of therapy for colloids is mainly to expand the intravascular space for refractory fluid replacement. So now that I have covered the two major types of fluid, let's jump into the second objective for this video and that is maintenance of fluid. So how would you calculate maintenance of fluid for a patient? This is done through the rule 4 to 1 rule milliliter per hour. And this is based on the patient's weights in kilogram. So first off, we multiply the first 10 kilogram of the patient by 4 milliliter per kilogram. And the second 10 kilogram, they are multiplied by 2 milliliter per kilogram. And anything after the first 2 10 kilogram, they are multiplied by 1 milliliter per kilogram. So let's go over an, uh, an example over here. So let's say a patient comes in and they are 80 kilogram. So we're going to multiply the first 10 kilogram by 4 milliliter per kilogram and that gives us 40 milliliter. The second 10 kilogram is multiplied by 2 milliliter per kilogram and that gives us 20 milliliter. So now we have used the first two 10 kilogram where we have left is 60. So 10, 10 minus 80 is 60. So 60 times 1 milliliter per kilogram gives us 60 milliliter. So adding these volumes up, we end up with 120 milliliter per hour. And this is basically the total maintenance fluid for that patient. If you have any question, please leave them in the comment below. And thank you for watching.